Hello and welcome to Season 4 of the LuxCast, where we explore the intersections of Christian faith, culture, and our lives. My name is Chuck DeGroat, professor at Western Theological Seminary. The theme of this season is civility, and today we are talking with Hope College professor Dr. Deidre Johnston and Hope Interim President Dr. Dennis Voskel. In today's polarized age, these two and others at Hope College are striving to make dialogue civil again specifically on campus and in the classroom. They sat down to discuss the virtues of public discourse and engaging difficult topics in healthy ways. Well, Dennis, you began the academic year uh, with sort of a, a call to us to think about civility in discourse. Can you talk more about why that was so important to you at that time to define uh, your presidency at Hope College, perhaps? When I began to um uh, look into what it would mean to be the interim president at Hope. I uh, read all the materials for the strategic plan because I know the strategic plan has been important for, for the institution for the last uh, four to five years. And when I uh, began to read it, one of the prologues, I guess, to it, you'd say, was included these five virtues of, of public discourse. I was so taken by them and impressed by those that I basically said, when I did my, uh, uh, my letter of application, if you want to call it that, I said, mm -hmm. I, I said exactly that. And then when I started thinking about the uh, August uh, uh, presentation mm -hmm. to faculty and staff, I thought that's what I really want to focus on. Right. Because you know every institution, including Hope, has a difficulty around discussing certain issues and doing it in a way mm -hmm. which is both civil and uh, um, uh, gracious. So that was why I fixed on that. And as I began to work on that speech, uh, I began to realize that uh, these, these were virtues that had roots mm -hmm. in the Christian tradition, in the scriptures even, yes. and that were um, very important to uh, the way we deal with each other on a, almost a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what grabbed me. And it's been gratifying in a sense that um, the Student Congress has mm -hmm. been using these, the Board of Trustees. I introduced them to the Board of Trustees at the first Excellent meeting and um, with some of the difficulties that there were in discussing mm -hmm. tough issues, I thought this would be a helpful way to uh, say, let's relax, let's treat each other well. And um, so this, this is kind of the genesis of it all. And, and mm -hmm. uh, it's carried through. Actually, it's, uh, it's been used a lot. And I was surprised by that, that uh, how much it caught on and people have been referring to it. And mm -hmm. even, even in doing that, it helps us to step back and think, okay, uh, and I'll just say that the virtues are the humility to listen, mm -hmm. the uh, hospitality to welcome other points of view, mm -hmm. the uh, patience to understand or seek to understand where they're coming from rather than our immediate reaction to that, and the courage to challenge uh, in love, in, in a mm -hmm. loving way, uh, what you disagree with, but the way you do that is absolutely crucial. And then the honesty to speak the truth and mm -hmm. do, it, do it in love. So those are the five virtues of civil discourse that I didn't come up with, mm -hmm. but that a previous number of faculty members did, and that be, mm -hmm. came used in uh, early discussions at Hope College. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you uh, something. As mm -hmm. you have read about these, and you have uh, obviously in your, your work of uh, dealing mm -hmm. with tensions and disagreements, have you found something in your own way of doing it uh, mm -hmm. that would replicate or uh, be mm -hmm. uh, consistent or consonant with these? Mm -hmm. Very consistent. So um, the work I do is in something called intergroup dialogue. Mm -hmm. And it's a very specific um, way of approaching controversy and conflict and also diversity and social identity education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the way that it's been used. Um, so a very specific structure and it gives a process and it gives a goal and in the way that um, I have utilized this at Hope College and really brought this into the college community, both in teaching classes in intergroup dialogue, but also in training faculty and staff. So we have, I think, 130 mm -hmm. yeah, faculty yeah. who have gone through training in intergroup dialogue um, on our faculty right now. So it's quite impressive out of 245 some faculty to reach that many people. Um, but it, they very much resonate okay. with these uh, virtues of public discourse and very much resonate, I think, to our Christian mission. Yes. And what we're called to be is something different than perhaps another institution in the way that we interact with each other. 
Um, so I would say one of the keys with, with intergroup dialogue is it gives a process for leaning in to conflict. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, rather than avoiding conflict, which we know but we don't like to admit, just means it's going to erupt yeah, later yeah. in bigger and worse and uglier ways. Um, but a way to lean into it and to not get um, discouraged that because I disagree with something someone says or a position they hold doesn't mean that I hold them in any less esteem. As yes. a person and as a child of God that we welcome that person, we welcome another voice, we welcome another perspective. And our problem, I think our challenge with this is that we so often are, are very defensive that if somebody disagrees with me, then they're attacking me personally. Yes. And we've got to be able to separate that so that we can engage in meaningful conversation because that's the way we're going to solve the big problems facing our society and our church is to have these conversations. And they, they're painful sometimes, they're difficult, um, but intergroup dialogue takes people through a process where we can do that um, and the ceiling does not fall on our heads. I, I, like, I like that very, very much. It's exactly yeah. the way I uh, understood that these might operate. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not uh, a social scientist or not an expert in this, but it's the way on a relational basis mm -hmm. that I find is very, very helpful. Right. You disarm people who are assuming that you're going to blast them or that you're mm -hmm. going to lay out a large track of a disagreement uh, in terms of facts or whatever right. it is. And if you, um, I, I think a, a major part of this, and I've been thinking about this a lot, mm -hmm. uh, of the five virtues, humility it underlies yes. a lot of them. Yes, You've got to be able to uh, confess that you don't have all the, or as my grandson said to me when he was very young, Grandpa, you don't know everything. And, if, and to be able to understand that, uh, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you're wrong or whatever, but you need to respect the person enough to listen mm -hmm. and be humble enough to understand that you don't have all the answers. the answers. And to know that what has been your experience may not be the experience that someone yeah. else has had. And so one of the things that we emphasize in uh, dialogue is to speak from your own experience. Try not to speak for other people mm -hmm. and other experiences that you do not have yes. um, and make assumptions about others, but speak from your own experience authentically. And there's an honesty and a truth and a vulnerability yeah. Uh, to doing that. That's, that's absolutely true. Yeah. Vulnerability, it's not one mm -hmm. of the five virtues, but it's one of the, one of the results yes. of, of these virtues, like mm -hmm. humility. And, uh, and I understand that you've done this not just at Hope, but at other institutions, mm -hmm. and it's become something that's been very valuable for lots of people. So mm -hmm. you're the practitioner of, uh, of the uh, virtues, I would yeah. say. It's been um, so very rewarding and, frankly, just fun. Um, to engage other uh, universities and colleges. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot of work with Christian universities and colleges, seminaries, churches. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Sometimes coming in when there's a particular problem to address within a community and how do you bring this community back together to really engage yeah. in authentic dialogue and communication with each other. Um, and sometimes just to do training so that they can do the training uh, and expand mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. the train the trainer model, and incorporate this into the culture of the climate of their community, their campus community, or their church community. I like what you said about this uh, uh, fitting a Christian community, that these are, not all communities would find uh, these virtues to be uh, hitting the mark for them, uh, uh, mm -hmm. such as humility. Humility is not something that our culture right. embraces right. easily. But in our, in our tradition, our Christian tradition, yeah. uh, with Jesus as a model, it, it so fits mm -hmm. uh, our understanding of the role that uh, uh, Jesus played and the way in which he uh, maybe uh, 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 upset the expectations of some of the people mm -hmm. who were expecting to disagree with him and to uh, set themselves against him. Absolutely. We um, talk about intergroup dialogue as teaching countercultural yeah. communication skills. These are not the skills that are valued in our culture. So I often make the distinction between dialogue, what's dialogue, and what is debate. Yeah. So it used to be in communication studies that we thought the most competent communicator, we would evaluate and measure and assess them on how argumentative they were. Yeah, yeah. And this <laughs> takes an entirely different approach and says rather than imposing your viewpoint on someone else, rather than forcing a group to reach agreement, we're going to take agreement off the table. 
because then people are not as defensive. Mm -hmm. Then we can mm -hmm. have a real conversation. Um, so rather than debating, we're looking for understanding. How do I understand someone else's position? How do I validate someone with whom I disagree? How do I embrace other perspectives that are not my own? Mm -hmm. But that still means, back to your virtues of public discourse, that you can challenge. It doesn't mean yeah. that we're just yeah. all going to sit around and agree with whatever anybody says, but that we create an environment in which people can challenge each other in a way that the defenses don't go up. Because once people become defensive, learning has stopped, communication has stopped. Um, we don't really progress very far and we, get very we far. We push people away. Absolutely. And um, uh, it's not a matter of winning arguments on points. This isn't a debating right. society. This no. is a matter of, of uh, learning to understand and uh, accepting. It's, it has a relational dimension to it, mm -hmm. which I think for almost everyone is important. Uh, and uh, it's, the, it's the, uh, the bottom line, in a sense, is in a sense not winning that debate. We're not, mm -hmm. we're not expecting to kind of come up with winners and losers. We're right. expecting to come up with people who can understand other points of view, and that's the beginning mm -hmm. of, uh, yes. of, of becoming able to uh, accept, agree, yes. to work together, compromise, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And what's so amazing about uh, my experience with this process is that you talk about taking agreement off the table, and first people get very, very nervous. Well, what's the point? Why <laughs> yes. are we here? Yeah. Why are you taking my time? What's anything if we don't have agreement? But once you take it off the table and you get a group to engage each other with the assurance that they don't have to agree with the other side that they find so threatening, mm -hmm then it's miraculous how often agreement emerges from that yes. very group yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end of the process that oh. they say, well, yeah, I guess I do understand this in a different way. And yes, I can concede this particular point that I was probably ill-informed oh. or ignorant on my part. It's wonderful. So. I, I'm so pleased that you were able to, uh, to use your skills, your gifts of, uh, of helping people to uh, work through this in a process way. Mm -hmm. that uh, you've had uh, success at that and it's, and it's, it's worked in many cases. Mm -hmm. But right. I, I think we kind of have the same ends in mind too. Yes, we you do. Know? We do. And part of um, the intergroup dialogue process that I appreciate is we take people up through five steps. And the first is setting the environment. Mm -hmm. That first you need to establish some level of trust and some guidelines for how we're going to engage mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. And if we skip over that point or try to do that too quickly, things don't go very well. Uh, the second stage that we um, work on is developing some communication okay. skills. Okay. So sometimes, yeah. and this is the part that you know triggers me, is I'll see a sign on campus, dialogue, 7.30 on Thursday night, that we're going to take on the most contentious issue in the society, and we're going to bring mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. randomly, and we're going to have a real dialogue. No, you're not. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, but to have some foundation in listening. We talk about listening. We don't know how to listen. We don't know how to speak concisely. We don't know how to ask questions that take the conversation mm -hmm. to a deeper level. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know how to ask questions of somebody to go into further depth on their point rather than coming back to our platform mm -hmm. and presenting mm -hmm. our own point. So those are all how would we validate somebody that we disagree with. Yes, that is possible. There are all sorts of ways mm -hmm. to validate mm -hmm. somebody with whom you disagree. Um, so we work on those skills, and only then do we delve into the hot topics, the conflict, the controversy that's facing a particular yeah. group. In our culture today, not just the culture of the church and mm -hmm. of the faith, in the culture all, all in general, nothing is more important than, than that uh, because uh, how long can we as a society hold together when we, when we look at each other uh, as um, enemies, uh, even though there are so much that we ha there's so much we have in common as mm -hmm. human beings mm -hmm. that uh, uh, we we, we miss an opportunity, and uh, uh, this is a fractured era, but I'm not without hope. But I, I, I place it in the, the fact that people do uh, want to um, relate, they want to learn, mm -hmm. and uh, if we can stir that a little bit and give, right. a, give a little varnish to it, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful. I don't, I don't yes. despair, let's put it that way. Right. I, too, am hopeful. And I think the, the virtues of discourse, I think the, those tied to our Christian faith as to why we're doing it that gives them more purpose and yes. depth. Um, and I think there is hope. 
but boy, do we need it <laughs> in our society and in our church. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just a remarkably fractured, as you yeah, said, yeah. time. Thank you for what you're doing. Uh, I'm eager to come on the journey sometime with you on, on, the, on those kind of issues. Excellent. And thank you also for creating a vision for us as an institution yeah. moving forward. Uh, and I think to have that vision and that ideal in mind gives us something to uh, strive for. Yes, and I, I appreciate that. It's uh, uh, Once I read those five virtues that came mm -hmm. from a number of years ago, uh, I knew that that's something that was very, very special. So mm -hmm. uh, that drove me uh, to doing the, doing the presentation that way. So thank you very, mm -hmm. very much.